Hello everyone, welcome again to my channel 3 Dash. Guys, this time I had bring this uh, SolidWorks tutorial for you. So in this video, we're going to learn how to design this self, sheet metal self in a sheet metal workspace inside SolidWorks. So if you had never tried sheet metal workspace inside SolidWorks, no problem. Just watch this complete video. You will learn a lot. And using these, you, if you'll follow along the video, you can also create a design like this. So let's move on to SolidWorks and start doing the things. Hey everyone, so now we are into SolidWorks so let's start a new part i will go into this area over here and i will click on this icon and then i will click on this new part option here you can see a window will pop up like this where the part is already selected i will simply press ok to start a new part it will take few seconds and here you can see my part drawing space is ready to create my design now what i will do the first thing i will go into this file option over here and then I will click on save this file to my computer. So I will click on save to this PC and then onto my desktop. I will give it a name sheet metal self and then I will click on save. So here you can see onto the top. I just saved the file and that's why you can see the name just got updated to sheet metal self dot sldprt. So basically dot sldprt is an extension file format file format extension for SOLIDWORKS part files. So now uh, we had to create a sheet metal design at this moment into this drawing space. So what I will do, I will click on this sheet metal workspace. So here you can see now I am inside sheet metal workspace, but I cannot see any of the tool active is because always whenever you are into sheet metal workspace, you have to start from this base flange option. So I will click on this base flange and then I had to specify the plane onto which I want to create my base flange. I will select, I will click on this top plane and now the top plane is active. Now my, I can start creating a sketch onto this plane for my base flange. And the moment I selected the plane, you can see all my sketching tools just got activated, right? So here inside this area, I will find my tool that is rectangle tool. So I will click on this small drop down and from here i will activate this option that says center rectangle so just click on this tool to activate and here you can see that tool just got activated as a center rectangle tool then i will click on this origin point here and then i will drag my cursor like this to create a rectangle of my size so i will click somewhere outside and here you can see rectangle just got created and then i can press escape to come out of any tool active now here you can see that something like this now i will activate this smart dimension tool since i want to put dimension for this base flange sketch that i had created so i will activate this smart dimension tool then i will click on this top horizontal side on anywhere onto this line and then i will drag outside and i will click again and then i will input the values that i want to keep so i want to keep 200 and then i will press enter here you can see this size this side just got updated to 200 millimeter and again I will click on this side and I will drag outside and click somewhere and then I will press 100 will press enter so this is 200 this is 100 and both are in millimeter because if you'll see onto this bottom right corner here you can see it says mmgs so the system of unit that we are following right now is millimeter gram second so that's why these numbers are in millimeter. Now I will click on this finish a sketch option. And here you can see we just finished creating this base flange. But the moment you will click on finish a sketch, you will shift it to this base flange settings options where I had already specified some thickness for this sheet metal. For example, if you want to make a thickness of five, and if you click outside, here you can see the thickness just got updated to five millimeter. Here I just want to keep 1.5 millimeter and then I will click, click outside. So the thickness is getting created towards the bottom of the sketch here you can see. Now if I want to make it like if I want to reverse the direction I can click on this option I can activate it and I can reverse the direction here you can see. So I don't want to reverse it so I will just untick this option. Also I can make it symmetric like uh, from the sketch plane it will get extruded on both the directions symmetrically. So I just, I don't want to do that also. So I will just untick that option. Now, what I will do, I will simply click on this 
OK option, that green tick that you can see. I will just click on it to accept the results. And here you can see, I had created a base flange of 1.5 mm thickness using this seat metal work space. And here it is, it's of size 200 by 100 millimeter. Here you can see that. Now, since we want to design ourselves, so we want to add some flanges, or we want to add some flanges on the other edges also. So for that, again, I will move back to my seat metal worker space and here I will activate this tool called edge flange, right? So the moment we created the base flange, you can see all my seat metal tools just got activated. Now, since my base flange is ready, now I can use all these other tools to finalize my design to add more features onto it, right? So I will activate this edge flange tool now. Here you can see, then I will click on the edge that I want to bend like this and then you can see on the side you can see all the values so here i just want to give it a height of 20 so I, here i will change 20 enter here you can see the preview also there is one more thing like the radius the bend radius is very big at this moment because the thickness that we are following at this moment is 1.5 so the bend radius maximum can be three millimeter or less than that because uh, the bend radius basically we generally used to take uh, 1.5 times of the thickness of the seat metal so it's if it is 1.5 mm thick so 1.5 into 1.5 that will comes around 2.25 right so we can take the bend radius as 2.25 or else we can also take 2.5 right more than little more than that so i will untake this option over here here you can see and here I will change the bend radius to 2.5 and will press enter. So here you can see now the bend radius is a little bit smaller and more looking much more better, right? And the other options, uh, the moment you will activate this edge flange tool, the other options, uh, here you can see the first one I already selected and here also this one is selected. So I'm not going to change these default settings. I will simply press finish and here you can see the base flange I just created with a bend over here. Now I will also bend it towards inside. So again, I will activate this tool, edge flange. And this time I will select this edge. And this time I will bend it towards this direction by an amount of 10. I will press enter, press enter. Here you can see. And again, the same problem. You can see the bend radius is a bit higher. So to solve this issue, what I will do, I will go on to this design tree. And I will expand this option that says seat metal and then I will click on this option and I will click on this edit feature right and here you can see the default bend radius is already specified 5.35 so what I will do I will try to change this I will override these default parameters and I will write it 2.5 and will press enter then I will click on finish now by default all the bend radius now changed to 2.5 millimeter only here you can see so we just added a uh, two vents at the bottom of this flange now the next flange that we are going to add is onto these two sides right so i will simply activate this edge flange tool again and then i will select this edge and i will also select this edge so i will click on this option first then i will select this edge also here you can see both edges just got selected but if i'll move my cursor towards upward you can see it's adding the materials so here i just want to add 100 100 so i will write 100 here you can see i just i just need to write 100 over here and i will press enter and then i will click on finish and here you can see okay so it's 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 having some problem here you can see whenever we are bending this sides it's getting intersected onto this uh flat bended area over here so how to solve this one let's do this so i will make a right click and we'll click on this edit feature because this is giving me an error and instead of bending it from this position what i will do here you can notice the results and if i'll change this to this here you can see the bends is moving towards outside so instead of this i just want to keep this one here you can see now bends are giving more clearance to this bended flanges and now if we'll press ok here you can see the results on both sides they are little bit we are giving little bit of clearance onto these spaces so those features you can use like that and add things things like that okay now again we'll activate our edge flange tool and we are going to add more flanges i will this time i will select this edge then i will activate this option then i will select this also and i will also select this edge so i just want to add all three edges so i will activate it and this time i will select this edge so you can see i had selected all three edges and then i want to do just 
20 millimeters onto this side so i will just write 20 i will press enter and will press double enter and here you can see a flange just got added onto these three sides only so here it is here is the result to make it look much better we had to change few settings again in the custom relief let's try some other kind of reliefs maybe o brown we click on finish and here you can see we can we can notice the re results right now the next thing that we need to add is <coughs> we want to uh, apply some chamfers onto these two corners right so for that again into my state metal worker space i will simply activate this option that says corners i will expand it and from here i will click on this option that says break corners so i will activate that and then here i will i will make sure that the break type is this one chamfer and then i will select these these corners but here you can see the corner uh, right now is five millimeters so i will change this to maybe 100 so if it's giving an error we'll change this to 80 and it is working fine or maybe i will just click on finish and here you can see we had just made it like this right now uh, now we want to add few more features again we'll activate this edge flange tool and this time i will select this edge and again we'll activate this since we want to add more edges to it and again i will select this edge so i had selected the edges from both the sides and then i will give it a value of 20 and i will press enter enter here you can see now again the same problem you can notice the things that we are adding when we are adding a flange onto this area it's getting intersected with this flange so to solve this issue maybe we had to reduce the break corners so instead of 80 we can make it 75 and press enter finish and maybe that will solve the issue here you can see that just solved the issue now we got some clearance also so this is our result so it's a kind of self that we had designed just by folding a sheet metal sheet here you can see now if i want to check whether my sheet metal design is good or not so that we can verify when we'll flatten this complete design and if we'll go on to the sheet metal worker space here you can see there is a tool called flatten so just activate this tool and here you can see your design is getting flattened right this means whatever you had designed can be manufactured whatever you had designed can be unfolded so your design is uh, very nice very good and it's done in a right manner here you can see so this is the unfolded pattern of my design so i will just come out of the folded pattern here you can see this is my design now i want to add few holes onto this side just to mount this piece onto the wall so for that i will move on to the features workspace and from here i will activate this whole wizard tool and then i will move on to the positions and then i will select this face where i want to create holes and instead of uh, selecting these these holes i just simply want to create these simple holes and then again i will move on to the positions i will select the face onto which i want to put my holes and i will place my holes like this randomly first and then we can specify its position so this is the holes that we had randomly placed and then i will select both the hole centers and will make sure that they are horizontally aligned and constrained right now i will activate my sketch dimension tool and from the bottom of this face of this cell and from this end i just want to keep 10 right and from this also i just want to keep 10 so i will specify all the dimension to constrain my whole positions right so they are on a right place right here you can see like this and also from this side to this i just want to keep 40 also from this side to this i just want to keep 40 so this way you can input the values you can input the measurements needed to constrain your sketches here you can see like this and also this center and this center should be horizontally aligned so instead of inputting the values we can simply apply the constraint so now you can see the center of all the four circles are black in color this means the position of these holes are fully constrained now we'll move back to the type then here simply i will change the hole size to four here you can see i will click on the finish and here you can see the hole just got created but these holes are through holes uh, these holes are extending up to the end and to solve this that is who i will again edit this feature right and instead of end conditions 
you can see the option is through hall selected so i will just change this to up to next and then i will click on finish the sketch now all the four holes are getting created onto that faces only so now by using those holes we can mount this piece onto the wall and then we can use this sheet metal self as a piece to place my objects onto it right and also if you want to generate a flat pattern out of it simply go to the sheet metal workspace click on this flat pattern and it will automatically generate a flat pattern like this also if you want to export it for example here you can see this is the flat pattern we created right and now if i want to use this flat pattern i can if i want to take it for the manufacturing what i can do i can simply come over here onto the flat pattern option and then under that we will expand we can make a right click onto it and then i can click on this export to dxf or dwg so basically all the tool shops they need dxf or dwg files to laser cut this sheet metal parts so i can export this to dwg or dwf here you can see it's getting exported as dxf file i can also change this to dwg if you want as per our choice but here i want to export it as dxf file and then on the desktop i can simply click on save and the dxf file just got exported so dxf file are nothing but a simple sim single line diagrams made out of the made out of the sketch of this this part right now all the time whenever you are done you can simply click on this exit option and you will be back to into your 3d model workspace so how do you think uh, is this tutorial easy for you uh, if not just let me know in the comment like how i can what i can do to improve my solidworks tutorial for you also if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also like this video because uh, if, if you like this video algorithm will understand that okay this video is is for the audience this is what you need so it's important so guys thank you so much for watching see you in the next video